Welcome to another episode of Stardust and Golden. Um, I'm your host, Tom Sayers, and this is another sale fail uh, episode series. So this one is about runaway diesels and fire that may result from a runaway diesel. Now, recently I was watching a video from uh, another channel I follow from Captain Rick and a friend of his by the name of Fred. Um, I lost, I did have talked to Fred. I lost contact with Fred. I wish I still had contact information because I would like to interview him. And if I do find him, I will interview him and do a sort of like an augmentation to this video. But anyways, uh, Fred lost his boat um, to a fire from a runaway diesel. Now, if you don't know what a runaway diesel is, runaway diesel or a runaway engine, because it can happen to other forms of engines too, um, is an engine that pretty much is running on its own and it's totally out of control and it accelerates at a very high rate of speed until it just blows up um, and which usually causes a fire now this can happen to in my experience uh, I used to run across this a lot way back uh, when I first started in the mechanical industry about 45 years ago uh, we used to have a lot of motorcycles um, way back in the day that were two cylinder or multi cylinder sometimes three cylinder two cycle engines uh, and outboard engines on boats that would be multi-cylinder two-cycle engines. These were famous for getting away from you, usually in operations where the engine was getting too hot. Um, and you would have a deposit possibly on the piston or on the head of the engine inside the cylinder that started burning the fuel. And once that started happening, the fuel that was in the crankcase would continue to burn even though the throttle bodies were closed. So the carburetor could still input air, even though it was on the idle circuit. And the butterfly or the slides would be nearly closed, but just enough to let it idle. Uh, but they would run away. Uh, they wouldn't idle at all, and you could shut the key off. And they were no longer responding to detonating the fuel or igniting the fuel from the ignition process. They were igniting the fuel from a hot spot inside the cylinder which could be, you know, the carbon or a spark plug, whatever the case may be. Something got hot in there and is igniting the fuel and pulling the fuel up from the crankcase. And they would run away until the point where they would just almost explode. It's a very scary situation. And it's very intimidating. And the only thing you can do in a situation where these motors, or I'm sorry, engines run away, is to starve it for oxygen. You have to put, uh, if, if you can reach or access the input where the air comes into the air box, um, you put a rag there or your hand, anything to stop the, anything to stop the um, air from going in. Um, there was a lot of cases where we couldn't do that because we couldn't access the airports on a lot of the old motorcycles and some of the old outboards would have tubes where you couldn't easily get your, uh, a rag or your hand or anything in there to stop the airflow. Um, so even though the ignition was off, there's no power, there's nothing in the system, these things would just run off and they would go crazy. And we found that CO2 fire extinguishers um, could put them right out just by spraying the head or the cylinder of the engine because it would cool it down. They're pumping out about negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit of liquid uh, CO2. So in a fire situation or in a situation like this where you really need to cool something fast, they would cool it right down and stall the machine, whether it would be an outboard or a multi-cylinder two-cycle uh, motorcycle. Diesels sort of the same thing. They're really not running on a hot spot per se. Diesels are timed uh, through the fuel injection and they're combusting just off of the compression of the fuel. Once it reaches 640 degrees, it ignites and you get compression and so on, power strokes. Now it's more common, it's mostly common in two cycle diesels and diesels that are equipped with turbochargers. And the reason for that is both of those can get fuel very easily into the crankcase. And some of those standard four cycle diesels can too, if they have a really serious leak down problem where one of the fuel injectors is constantly pouring fuel that's ending up in the oil pan and mixing with the oil. Or if they have a bad, um, if they have a mounted, fuel pump that's leaking somehow into the crankcase, however that may be, or a, possibly a turbocharged seals leaking, whatever the case may be, they're getting fuel. 
and the timing circuit of the fuel injectors is no longer into place so they'll just run until they explode. The problem with this is when they do explode, they'll throw a rod or piston or what have you right through the engine block or sometimes the oil pan, more likely the oil pan. And now we have burning fuel and burning oil running through the bilge of a boat. So you have a major problem and the small toy fire extinguishers that are on most sailboats are not gonna put that fire out. Uh, chances are one in a thousand that you'd be able to get that kind of a fire out in that kind of a running river stream of fire. I mean, um, it's flowing fast, it's flowing through the bilge, and you've got a lot of other things, even gas tanks or anything that could ignite down there. Uh, so this is something you really don't want to happen. Now, shutting off the fuel supply, like a lot of diesels do, to, to stall the engine or stop the engine, will not do a thing in this case, because they already have their own fuel source. They're already stuck with fuel for another source. So again, you need to starve the engine for oxygen. Uh, some engines, I know that most of the two strokes do have butterflies that cable operated um, that will shut the air off for the intake and that will solve the problem immediately. Um, you can also spray a fire extinguisher, a dry powder into it, uh, into the intake to start it for engine if you can access it that quickly. When this happens, it's usually very fast. It starts revving up out of control. If you're up in the cockpit and you have to move a set of stairs and declamp the stairs or, how, or however your engine's in your boat, getting to it might be problematic at best, especially offshore in a bad seaway. Um, you really want to have some way to shut that off. I would suggest, and there is manufacturers out there and Captain Rick talked about this on his site too, that make um, items to stall this out electronically. They automatically detect it, they shut your air supply off. I do not know anything about the devices. I have not tested them. I like to do reviews on stuff, but I have not put one of those on a boat. I have not um, physically handled one. I haven't tested one. I haven't put it through the torture test. So I really don't know uh, much about the automatic ones. I do suggest building or machining out um, a cable operated butterfly bar, which would be basically the same inside diameter as your input tube for your air going into the throttle uh, of your diesel engine. It would have to be hard mounted. It can't be just mounted on a rubber hose with a cable because when you would go to pull it, there's a good chance it could move, flex, and not close. So it has to be hard mounted to the engine. Um, I highly recommend that. And also one of the things that I'd highly recommend is if you have a diesel on your engine and you're afraid this might happen, especially if it's a two stroke diesel or a um, uh, turbo diesel, get a CO2 fire extinguisher. You're gonna be spraying liquid CO2 or 60 degrees below zero. That's gonna not only cool the intake, if you can't get it into the intake, you can basically spray the head right where the injectors go into it and cool it enough to where the fuel can't possibly burn inside that cold engine. So if you can't get to the intake, the least you could do is cool the head down cold enough to where fuel can't possibly reach the 640 degrees to ignite inside that cylinder. Uh, and this is how we used to stop the old outboards and the old motors, multi-cylinder uh, two-stroke motorcycles that would go um, crazy with the revving. We would spray it down with CO2 and it would instantly kill the engine, just spraying the head because the combustion can't happen inside if there's not the right temperature. Ideally, you want to spray it right into the intake if you can, if you can reach it. That's, the, that's your best bet. Um, but I would highly suggest if you have a diesel on your engine and you're afraid this might happen, have some sort of a system where it's a cable operated um, shutoff valve, an air shutoff valve, like a butterfly inside the system. It could be anywhere in the system, hard mounted. Um, that's your best defense against a runaway diesel. There's no doubt. And the fire extinguisher is highly recommended if you have it in a boat. They're a little bit heavy. CO2 is heavy. It's kind of big and bulky. It's not something you really want to keep on your 25 footer if, if you don't have the room and you're traveling around the world and already are loaded down with stuff. Um, the bigger boats, yeah, it's very easy to plug in and just keep a CO2 handy somewhere, bolt it to a firewall inside the engine compartment, you know, if you have to. Um, 
the electronic uh, shutoff valves, I don't really recommend because by that time, if you have a runaway diesel, there's a lot of heat in that engine room. I don't trust anything electronic personally. Um, you could look into it and see what the stats are. Uh, look at some of the stuff that's out there. Uh, I'm sure there's some good manufacturers who've done a lot of tests uh, with the equipment. Uh, but it's something that uh, you really want to research before you just go spend the money on. But runaway diesels are a problem, and so is the fire that can result from them. Once they explode, again, you have a river running through the, the, the bilge of the boat of burning fuel and oil. Now, the CO2 fire extinguisher here is another way to put that out because that small toy that you have in there for the dry powder for putting out small you know, stove fires, uh, those are good for paper, you know, basically and it's maybe a small grease fire on your stove. I've used those fire extinguishers many, many a times and I found them to be borderline um, sufficient. They're sufficient, uh, but in a real world situation, I can offshore, I would consider them useless. Uh, a CO2 will actually help you put out a fuel liquid fire in the bilge of your boat. Uh, but if you blow a diesel on a runaway and it's it's sending down fumes, the chances are you're just going to want to get off the boat unless you got some real good fire protection. Uh, because, again, the toy ones that you see on most boats, the dry powders, those aren't going to do it. They're not going to put that fire out. I've been there. You need a real fire extinguisher. And I'll get into another video where I cover that more in depth. Uh, but, um, anyways, it's a serious thing. If I can get a hold of Fred, I will do, you know, sort of an on air interview so I could you know set this back up out there for a bit but people need to be aware of it anything that could be a danger out on a sailboat I want to try to stress it and get it out there for you uh, because a lot of people uh, I mean, it's a very enjoyable sport it really is sailing is uh, a lot of people just live and breathe it you know and I'm, I'm one of them I do it on a bit of a micro budget but I still I, I love sailing and some people are out there making their whole life out of it. They're sailing around the world and having the time of their lives. It doesn't have to be miserable. It doesn't have to be fearful. Um, taking precautions like having the right fire extinguishers and making sure your diesel set up so it doesn't cause a fire out in the middle of the ocean uh, is rather important. Uh, so, and if you have any questions, I always leave my uh, contact information, my number, um, and email and everything on my videos. So it's very easy to contact me. And if you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, I have the tool series, sail fail series. I'm coming out with another series on, um, basically I'm gonna review products and services. Um, so that's gonna be coming out probably very soon. And if you have any questions at all, uh, or any mechanical, because I, I've been doing this a long time, the mechanical thing, so, and the electronics, so, um, you know, if you have a question, please, you know, just write, uh, call in. I have a P.O. box or an email, whatever works for you. But I wanted to get this information out there because uh, Fred lost his boat. It was really tragic. It could have been much worse. And at least he, um, he survived it. And somebody was there to rescue him. He wasn't too far from shore. Uh, but it could have been a lot worse for him. And it's just a scary proposition when something like that happens uh, to another sailor. Or to anybody and um, I just hope it doesn't happen to you know me or you so let's keep that in mind and I'm going to matter of fact I if anybody wants um, you know drawings or plans I'm making uh, machining one right now um, in my lab uh, machining a air shut off for my my diesel so that can't possibly happen because mine's strictly a fuel shut off it's just a cable operated shut off shuts the fuel off to the injectors but if for some reason my crankcase was filled with fuel right now the only thing i have i do have a co2 on my boat right next to the engine compartment uh but i would rather not have to take the time to do that because the engine could go before i ever get to that uh, point where i get down into the cabin open up the firewalls for the engine compartment and then start spraying it with co2 there's a good chance by the time that happens I won't be able to get down there to put it out. So I'm machining out a butterfly valve to shut the air off. And if anybody needs drawings on it or an idea how to make it, you know, I can easily support you on that. 
anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in and please comment and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. And we really would like anything. If you have any kind of um, mishaps on your boat, please give us a call. Let us know because we would like to get that information out there for other sailors. So if anything breaks on your boat or you have any kind of you know small tragedy on your boat, um, let us know. And, you know, I'll try to get the information out so other sailors don't have to go through it. Um, and that's the whole point of this series on the sail fail. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll hopefully see you very soon.